Today we are going to go over what insertion sort is. And out of the two sorting algorithms that we learned, so first was bubble and second was selection sort. I think insertion sort is actually, it's not hard to understand the concept itself, but making the solutions for it, it will be very challenging compared to the first two that we solved. So what is insertion sort? Insertion sort, it splits an array into sorted and unsorted part. The values in the unsorted array are compared to the values in the left of the value. This is important. And placed at the correct position in the sorted array. Now, remember, for our selection sort, we had two parts to our array too, right? We had sorted and second was obviously unsorted. So same thing as selection sort. Insertion sort is going to have sorted portion and unsorted portion. Sorted portion at first will have only one element and unsorted portion is going to have all the rest of the elements. But as we go through our code and compare and sort our numbers, sorting portion is going to get bigger and unsorted portion is going to get smaller. Now, there is a easy way to illustrate how insertion sort works. So just think of cards in your hand. If you have a stack of cards in your hand and they are sorted, so you sorted all the cards that you got, arrange in ascending order. So it's going to be smallest to biggest in your hand. If you draw another card, so you got another card, you will go through each of the sorted cards starting either from the beginning or the end. And obviously you're gonna insert that card in the correct position. So that's what we are doing pretty much with insertion sort. So let's say that you have cards with numbers like 1, 2, 4, 6, 9, 10. And you are given a card with number 5. So you are either going to start from the beginning or the end and go through each card and then insert 5 at the correct place, which is over here. And then you would have a sorted stack of cards. and when you draw another one, let's say for example 3, you're going to do the same thing, repeat the same process, either start from the back or start from the front and then insert it in the corresponding order. And that's exactly what insertion sort does. It goes through the sorted part of the array and then puts it in the correct place. Now, time complexity for our insertion sort are these. And space complexity, it only takes one auxiliary space. And let's talk about time complexity later. But just to give you a quick overview, best case is going to be O of n and worst is going to be O of n squared. So you can tell that we are going to have something like nested loop. Now let's illustrate how insertion sort works like. We will use our same array, negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, and 0. So this array handles positives, negatives, and duplicates. Now let's come back here. Negative 2, 2, negative 1. Now we have that same array. And like always, first element is sorted. Rest of it is unsorted. We are going to start sorting our array starting at first element of our unsorted array. So this is same as our selection sort. Now I am going to check if my left element, so left of this, is it smaller or bigger than the current value that I'm looking at, which is two. So I'm at index one and my current value is two. Is the element at the left of my current value, is it smaller or bigger? Well, it's smaller, right? So do we have to change anything? No. So we are going to have same array as our result, but we, obviously we're not done yet, but we sorted one more element and this is unsorted. Now, what's our current value? Well, current value is going to be negative one and we check to the left of our current value. Well, is two less than or bigger than negative one? Well, it's bigger, right? So we want to move this to the right and then move negative one to the left. And if we do that, we get this as our result. So we have three elements that are sorted. Now our next one is one and we compare that one to our left element, which happened to be two. So we change our spots 
All right, so this is the result that we get. And we have another one that's sorted now. And we have two more elements to go. Now our current value is zero. Well, is two bigger or smaller than zero? Well, it's bigger, right? So we want to move our zero to the left. And we check again. Well, is one bigger or smaller than zero? Well, one is greater than zero. So we want to move it over here because obviously uh, zero is bigger than negative one. We have this as our result and everything but the last one is sorted. And finally, our last iteration, we know that this zero belongs here. So we're gonna insert it here and then we get our final array right here. So the difference between bubble sort, selection sort, and insertion sort is that bubble sort checks adjacent. And each time we go through the loop, we know that at least one number gets sorted. And each time we go through, additional number is sorted, and then additional number, another additional number. For selection sort, what do we do? We look for the min value and then swap to the correct place. How about insertion? What does insertion do? Insertion sort looks at the elements left of current value, which is the sorted part, sorted, and then it iterates through and insert at the correct place. Now that's it for insertion sort. Let's code our solution. If you guys find this helpful, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Thanks. Now let's go for our first solution. And I think the first solution is actually the easiest to understand. It might not be the best, but our first goal is to un really understand how insertion sort work. So we have our pseudocode here. You can try it on your own if you can. If not, that's totally fine. Come back to the video and we will go over the code. Now step one. First thing you have to do is obviously create a function that takes in a parameter array and we want to iterate through our unsorted portion of the array starting at index 1. Now if you remember we have two parts to our array. First one being sorted portion and second one being unsorted portion. And first element is always going to be sorted because there's only one element and everything to the right of that is going to be unsorted. And the reason we are starting at index of one is because, well, the element at index zero is going to be sorted already. Next one is to store current element to a variable. And next you want to declare a variable that points to the left of the current index. So if our index was here, the pointer is going to point to this and this pointer is going to change as we iterate down the sorted portion of the array. Next one is we are going to iterate down again, left to right, the sorted portion of the array to compare the elements. So let's say that our we sorted these two elements. Now uh, my current element is negative two and my pointer variable is going to point to this and we compare. Well, is negative two smaller than or greater than three? Well, it's smaller, right? So we are going to actually overwrite this negative two with three, and then we check again. Well, is negative three greater than or smaller than negative two? Well, it's smaller, right? So we stop and we overwrite this three with negative two. So that's how we are shifting elements to the right. And if you look at our if statements, well, the first one, if the element is greater than our previous element, we break out of the loop. We don't need to make any changes. And perfect example is the first two. Well, for the first two, do we need to make any changes to our position? No, right, they're in the correct place. So we have our sorted portion of the array, negative three and three. Now, next condition is if our current variable is smaller than the previous element, we again, overwrite this negative two with three and then insert negative two to this position. So essentially we are shifting elements to the right and inserting the new element is handled by uh, another line of code. Now, I want to show you an example. You probably saw this. Let's say that we sorted our elements up to here and our current variable is this first zero. So my current variable is zero and this is our sorted array so far. You can see that our sorted portion is this one, negative three, negative two, negative one, one and two. And this is our unsorted portion. Now. I know that my current variable is zero and my 
previous element is 2. And now we compare. Well, 0 is smaller than 2, right? So we are going to shift number 2 to the right. And as you can see, we did that just here. So we have our array, which is negative 1, 1, 2, 2, and 0. And then we check again. Well, is 1 bigger or smaller than 0? Well, it's bigger, right? So now we shift that number again. And as you can see, we get our result here. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 1, 1, 2, 0. So you can see that our old number 2 was overwritten by 1. And then we check again. Well, is negative 1 greater than or smaller than 0? Well, it's smaller, right? So what we do is we finally pretty much insert that or overwrite this position with our current variable, which is 0. And finally, we have our almost sorted array, which is this whole thing. And we only have one element that's unsorted. And the rest of it is sorted. So in order to sort this one, I want to go left and check all the elements to put 0 in the correct place. Now, if you don't get this part, that's fine. But I do want you to kind of put your head into it and think about how this is working. The important part of this whole insertion sort is being able to shift elements to the right. I think that's the hardest part. And just think about this. Just think about how this is working. If you don't get it, that's totally fine. Uh, it might help you to understand this actually better if you see the code itself. So now let's code our solution. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate through my array let, let i is equal to 1 because first element is already sorted and increment by 1 to iterate through all the elements. Now I'm going to make a variable and this is going to be current value. And next I want to make a variable called prev. I can call it prev index but I just want to leave it short and that's going to be i minus 1. So that's going to point to index of 0 for now. Next thing I want to do is I want to iterate through my array again. So this is going to iterate through my sorted portion of the array. And this one is going to be a little different. It's not your typical for loop. I'm going to start with the semicolon and prev is greater than negative 1 and I'm going to decorate prev by 1 each time and I'm going to return my array. Now, did this confuse you? If it did, that's fine. Well, I left my previous variable here for a reason and I'll tell you that why later. So let's just put a note here. And I want to iterate through my array, my sorted portion of the array, as long as my previous index is greater than negative 1. I could put this actually as previous greater than or equal to 0. It doesn't matter. And I want to decrement previous by 1. Remember, when our sorted portion was over here, we were iterating through our array left to right. So that's what I'm doing, just that. I'm iterating through my sorted portion of the array so that I can compare the elements and find the correct position to put my current value into. Now the hardest part. Well, let's start with the E0 first. So if current value is greater than or equal to array at index previous, I'll just want to break out of my loop. Because again, my current variable is 3. My previous number is negative 3. Do we need to make any swaps? No, right? So I just want to break out of that loop. Next is if my current variable is smaller than array at previous. So if my current variable is smaller than my previous element, I obviously want to shift my elements, right? Now, the hard part. So if you remember, you can see that my current position was overwritten with number two. So you might think, oh, I just put i as my uh, current position. Well, that's not exactly going to work because, well, what if, well, actually, let's put it this way. If it was the case that we had our current number was bigger than one, and we just had to shift or swap these two numbers, that wouldn't be a problem. But as you can see, our previous pointer keeps changing here, here, and here. So that's not going to work because if we were to swap, that means that I'm bringing this number one to this position. So zero will be here and one would be here. Well, that's not going to work, right? So I need a variable that's going to kind of change. Well, if you remember, previous is the element before, right? And if I were to just add one to that, that would work because this will also shift left as previous 
decreases. So my current value is at this index. My previous index is at this index. But if I were to add one, it would still refer to this. Now the next case, if my previous index was at this one, my previous plus one will refer to this one. So that's how the logic works. And finally, when our previous was negative one, our previous plus one would be this spot. And this one is the number that we want to overwrite. And we overwrite that with current variable later. So what we're going to do is we are shifting our elements here. So array at index previous plus i is going to be array at previous. So this is essentially, again, shifting our elements. It's basically doing this. The two twos here, ones here. And finally, we want to do this operation where we insert the new element to the right of the previous element. So that's going to be array at previous plus one. Well, is it going to be array at index i? No, right? We want to get our saved variable, which is curve value. And as you can see, we got our solution. But let's go through this one more time. I know that this is really confusing. So you might have to actually sit in and try to write everything for yourself. If you can, try it with the last number zero. Well, actually, let's let's do it one more time. Let's, let's actually just do that. So we have negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and zero. And our current variable is zero. Okay, well, we iterate through our array and we notice that our current variable is less than our array at prev. Prev right now points to this. Let's write that. Prev is equal to two. Well, it's smaller. So what we do is we add one to prev. So that's going to be this index and we overwrite that with the number two. So that's going to make our array like now this is the result we, that we get. So we shift previous element to the right and overwrite zero with two. Now we check again and now we decremented our previous value by one, right? So our previous is now going to be one. Well, is one smaller or greater than our current variable? Well, it's greater, right? So we shift that to the right and our array will look like this. And then we finally check, well, is zero greater than or smaller than zero? Well, now our break is gonna run. So we loop out of this for loop and we hit this code right now. And our previous for this iteration is equal to zero. So our previous value or previous index points to this zero right now. And if you saw our code, we are adding one to that previous index. So it's this over here. So it's going to look like this. So our one was overwritten with current variable. And what was our current variable? Our current variable, we stored it over here. So we bring that and, and we finally get our sorted array now. So this is pretty much the whole operation of how insertion sort work. I hope this is well, I actually, I, I actually don't hope that this was easy. I hope this illustration, especially this example helped. But if you don't, try to write everything down like this and try it on your own. Because when I first started studying insertion sort, that's what I did. It took a long time, but now I get it. So important part is actually not the code itself. Code is, isn't that hard to understand, but shifting and inserting elements are what's hard. Now, I actually forgot about one thing. Why do we have to keep our previous variable here? Well, let's just comment this out. And what if we were to just put it here? Well, it says that previous is not defined, right? Well, why is that? Well, if you look, previous is only declared inside this for loop. So we can't access whatever is in here. So that's why we have to put it in a different scope and we have to get rid of this. And as you can see, it doesn't work right now. That's why we have to get rid of it. So I hope uh, this is relatively helpful. Um, we will do more examples and I hope the other examples or other, other code is more understandable. But in my opinion, this is easiest to understand and see how actually insertion sort work. Now let's go for our second solution. Our second solution is pretty much the same as our previous solution. It's just that it's going to look a little differently. 
um, obviously the logic of insertion is never going to change. And if you remember, what was hard about insertion is uh, shifting of elements to the right and inserting the current element to the correct position. I want to illustrate a different code because I think this is best way to learn. I'm just implementing solutions in a different way. And maybe this solution will make more sense for you. And this is our pseudocode. Try it if you can. If not, come back to the video and we will go over it. First thing I want to do is I want to iterate through my array. And then let's start index one. I'm going to iterate through the whole thing. So length and increment by one each time. Next thing, I want to declare a variable and current value and save that to a variable. Now I want to declare another variable, my pointer variable that's going to iterate through my sorted portion of the array. And I will we'll just call it, well, I said J here, but let's just say prev. I think that's more intuitive. And that's going to be I minus I minus one. Now I'm actually going to use a while loop for this one. So while current value, actually not current value, previous index is greater than negative one. So it looks similar to our first solution and current value is less than array at index previous. As long as my previous index is greater than zero and my current number is smaller than my previous number. And if it's the other case, if, if it was bigger, I, I don't need to loop it because it's in the correct position. And that was the first case that we had. Finally, I want to return my array. Okay, that looks good. Now the hard part. So why my previous index is greater than negative one and current value is smaller. So we do need to loop through and change our stuff. We need to now shift our elements to the right. So if you remember from the previous one, it's going to be array previous one, and that's going to be equal to array at previous. And we have to decrement previous index here. In our for loop, we did it inside that last condition. But here, since we are using a while loop, we have to decrement our previous element here. And now we need the insertion part. So that's going to look the same. So array at previous plus one is equal to current value. And as you can see, we have our code. So, I mean, this is pretty much the same as our first solution, but just to walk through or just look at the differences, well, this one looks the same, this one looks the same, and this one is kind of the same because remember, for our folder, we put our previous variable outside of our folder, right? And the reason was because if you were to use our previous variable here, it's out of scope, we can't use it. So that's why we left our previous variable outside the scope, the inner uh, for loop. Now we are able to access that previous variable. And that's what partly why for loop didn't work for if we put previous variable inside the loop. And that's why I said that's that may not be the best solution, but easiest to understand. And the reason we use while loop is obviously we can just put it outside here without just worrying about it. It doesn't make our for loop look weird, but the process itself is the same. We have our index, we decrement here. This is our condition, and this is shifting elements to the right. This is inserting element in the correct place. So that's it for our second solution, and let's go over the next one. Now, let's go over our third solution, and this we are going to use a recursive function to solve this problem. And by now, I think you should be familiar. Well, if we use recursive solution to sort our array using insertion sort, our space complexity actually increases. And what does it increase it to? It increases to O of N space, whereas before it was O of one. Then you might think, why, why are we even coding this? Well, first of all, we are just exploring different options for our solution. And part of learning, I think, is being able to implement different solutions and know why something works better and something doesn't. So for that purpose, we are going to solve a recursive solution for our insertion sort. You have your pseudocode here, read it and try it on your own. If you got the previous two solutions, this shouldn't be any problem. It's pretty much the same. Okay, now let's start. So first thing we need is we need a base case. So if i is equal to array dot length, I want to return my array. Okay, that looks good. Next, I want to store my current variable 
to cv current variable and same as before i'm going to make my previous index called prev and that's going to be i minus next i want to create my while loop so while previous is greater than negative one and current value is smaller than array at index previous so as long as my current value is smaller than my previous element and finally i want to recursively run my function so insertion sort three and pass in array and i want to decrement i by one each time all right that looks good and inside my for loop i want to first let's take care of the easy one first decrement previous by one okay next is the hard part but we did this two times already so we want to overwrite array at index j plus one so our temporarily current spot and set that equal to array at previous index and it's not j we used previous and finally what do we want to do we want to and I actually made a mistake here it shouldn't be i minus one that's why we were getting maximum call stack it should be plus one we need to iterate through our array finally we want to insert our current element or current value to correct position so that's going to be array at previous index plus one and set that equal to current value and we get our result so it looks good so this was our base case if i is equal to array dot length we just return we want to exit out of our recursive function and we decode two variables previous pointing to the pre previous index and this is our condition we are shifting our elements to the right decrementing previous index by one each time and then we are inserting or overriding our current value to its correct place and we are recursively calling our function to run this as long as i is equal to array.length so think of this one as our inner loop and our recursive function as the outer loop important key point to take away from this solution is the fact that this one has a space complexity of o of n because we are recursively calling the function for o of n minus two elements so that's the important part if you don't really get why this has a space complexity of o of n um, try looking at the space complexity video i think that should help you a lot now let's go over our next solution and this one we are actually going to twist things a little bit this time we are going to start from the last index of the array so remember for our other solutions our first sorted array or sorted part of the array was this negative three right but this time we are going to reverse our operation and say that this is our sorted array and everything to the left of that is going to be unsorted and if you remember for our first one again this one was sorted and everything to the right was unsorted but this time we are going to do it in a different way and this is an example that i have and this is pretty much the same example that we did for our first solution and i just wrote everything because i think you should know by now how this logic works so let's say that our current value is at three which is over here and if it was the case that we sorted up to three this should be our array so this is the unsorted part and this is the sorted part and obviously as you can see they're in order now if our current variable is three our previous value is going to be negative two which is over here and what do we do now we shift our elements to the right and this should be negative two i forgot the negative sign so we move this negative two to overwrite three and you can see that this is what we get this array and next our previous element is now going to be negative one well three is greater than negative one so we shift again we shift it to the left overriding this negative two with negative one now our previous element is zero which is this now we override it with negative one with zero so this is what we have and we keep going through the process and finally we are here we overwrote one with two and we have this array and we are at the end of the array now 
So there are no more elements and there are no values that's greater than our current value, which is three. So we replace the last element, this element, this two with current value and we insert three to that index. And as you can see, our array is sorted. This is our sorted part and we only have one last element which is not sorted yet. But as you can see, this is in the correct place. So for our last iteration, there, there wouldn't be a shifting of elements to the right. Before, when we had our bubble sort, we were shifting elements to the right, but now we are shifting it to the left. So the operation is reversed. So this is our pseudocode. Read it, try it on your own if you can. And if you don't get it, come back to the code or the video. First thing I want to do is I want to iterate through my array that i is equal to array dot length minus two. And I'm going to iterate until it's greater than negative one and increment i by one. Well, why am I starting at index array dot length minus two? Why not minus one? Well, remember our first number is always sorted. So we want to start here. And if you just console log array dot length minus one, and that's going to refer to this index, but we want to start at this index. Cause remember the first element is always sorted. And I want to decrement until I is greater than or equal to zero, or you can just write I is greater than negative one. Next thing, I want to create a variable, const current variable, and that's going to be equal to my current element. So array at index i. And now I want to create my previous index. And that's going to be i minus 1. If you thought that, that's actually wrong. We need to inverse, reverse our operation. So that's going to be array at index plus 1. So if you were at array at index i, we are here. And what's my previous number to this? Well, we were looking at the other way elements to the right of our current element which is this one so previous index is going to point to this number and finally we are going to return our array now let's make our while loop while previous is less than array dot length before it was previous is greater than negative one but since we are going to loop until we hit the last one it's going to be Array dot length and logic again is a reverse logic. Current value is greater than array at index previous index. All right, that looks, looks good. And we want to increment our previous variable by one each time. Now we need to handle our shifting logic. And remember that we are shifting to the right or left piece. We are shifting our elements to the left. We are shifting negative two to three and so on and so forth. So how are we going to represent that? So it's going to be array at index previous minus i, and that's going to equal to previous index, element at previous index. So again, this is shifting our elements and this is what it's doing. So it's moving negative two, which is array at prev, index and putting that in position previous minus one which is where three is and finally we want to insert our element to the correct position so that's going to be array at index previous minus one and we equal to our stored variable and as you can see we have our sorted array so if you look at our code and compare it to our regular insertion sort well it started at a different index so we started here whereas our first few solution is started here and we are iterating through until it's greater than negative one and decrementing each time and our previous element refers to elements to the right of our current element because those are the ones that are sorted already. So again, if we were to look at this array, our current value is three, elements to the right is sorted, elements to the left is unsorted, including the current value. So that's why we want to iterate to the right. And for this line, we are shifting our elements. And finally, we are replacing our element at the correct position with our current value. Now let's go over our time and space complexity. Well, let's go over our time complexity first and the best case. So when we have a best case, it's going to be when our array is already sorted. 
So array is already sorted. And remember, we had a nested loop for all of our insertion sort, right? So the outer loop will always run input number of times, and our inner loop will not run when it fails the condition check when our current variable is less than our previous variable that condition you remember that right we have to sort but if it's already sorted our current variable is going to be greater than our previous variable so that means that we don't have to run our inner loop so we only run outer loop number of times now the worst is when we want ascending but we have a descending array so we would have to run all the iterations of comparing and sorting for all elements so that's going to be all of n squared as for our space complexity it's going to be all of one because we only need a auxiliary space for our temporary variable but if you were to use recursion obviously it's going to be o of n now i do want to go over one more thing and there is actually a way to make this insertion sort so much easier but i saved this for the last because that defeats the whole purpose of being able to implement insertion sort but this method does work and we are going to use something called swap function to do just that so if you remember our swap function it looks like something like array is going to take two index and array at index one array at index two and that's going to equal to array at index one i mean two and comma array at index one this just simply swaps two numbers well how can we use this you can actually just comment this out comment this out and just use swap we pass in our array and now we pass in our index one and index two and as you can see it works it works wonderfully and if we were to use our swap function we didn't really have to go through the whole logic of shifting our elements to the right and inserting our element in the correct place but i feel like if we were to use our swap function of course yeah it's easier to understand it's simple but that again whole defeats the whole purpose of being able to implement insertion sort but i just wanted to show you that there is a another way i guess an easier way to do just this so this is it this is like a little cheat uh, cheat code if you like but it works.